Welcome to The Real Estate Show, episode 24. Today, we're going to talk about forms of brokerages. I've got Jonathan Denwood with me from WP, a mail right real estate show, and he's also on WP Tonic, which is a tech show, and he runs the WP Tonic. By the way, if you go to WP Tonic, the page is super fast. So is MailRite. So a lot of great things happening with the speed of the backside of the websites. So anyway, we're going to talk about brokerages, something that I'm very familiar with. And uh, I just got a message from my broker. <laughs> I'm a broker too. It's Karen Conrad, my real estate broker. My phone's going nuts. But that said, I gotta, I get, I'll get back to her after the show. You know, she's busy. She's really, she just signed a list. Uh, she's, he put in an offer last night and her business is starting to slowly build. And actually that offer came, this is a little update. I uh, Offer came from the person I interviewed in episode six from Reno. So the more people I, I interview locally, the better I get known and she gets known. And if she's really good, She'll come on the show and we'll do a timeline and start interviewing people around the community. It's a great thing for a broker to do. And um, we've got a great way to teach you that on Blab and turn it into a podcast, which is netcasting101.com. <laughs> so let's go, Jonathan. Three type of brokers. Let me explain them. Traditional broker uh, has evolved over the years. The Century 21 franchise, we'll talk about that, the traditional broker, broker splits, where the broker's paying for everything. We'll talk about the uh, desk fee model, which was uh, really Remax pushed that forward. There's executive brokers, another uh, all desk fee, hundred percent. And that can run from 15 to $2,000. We're going to talk about the hybrid. And then we're going to talk about some of the new models, like their virtual models where the brokerages have agents in the, every city, which I really like that model too. So without further ado, let's go right in. Anything, any updates this week? Jonathan, we've been busy with WordCamp, of course. No, I, I've been working on business development. I've been talking to some brokers. We've almost got a new element. It's all gelling together um that's a mail mail right um yeah system. I know it's really impressive um, the speed of the, of the site the systems are all coming together a lot of work though a lot of work and i've been seeing my um my beta testers i've been getting i've been seeing about three or four of those getting input from them about the system how it which parts they like um Got some reason, I've got some good feedback, and I, I will be changing some minor stuff. Um, yeah, very good. Yeah, so, so hey, go on, go ahead. so, so let's uh, talk about the traditional broker. Yeah, there's um, so the traditional the way I see the traditional broker is it's a regional, it's a city player, um, that can have from you know from five to 60 agents um there, there's quite a few of those kind of models in reno um i think there's a good side to it and a bad side you know i'm just going to put this to you and get your feedback about this because you and karen have, have got the years of experience um but i think you've agreed that i've really immersed myself in the industry mm -hmm. so i've watched it go from zero to knowing quite a bit and have a different perspective too which is good yeah, um, yeah, because um, there's a lot more to being an effective real estate agent than yeah. most people realize. Um, I like remember most... when he first started, he said, yeah, I should go into this big commissions, all that money. I said, no, it's not quite like that. you no, got to work it off. There's nothing like that at all. Yeah. Um, it can be, but, you know. It's no, it's, it's, no, it's, yeah, you'll yep. see like an executive spouse. So the good side of the tradition, you know, you're a junior, you're a junior um, real estate, you've just finished school. You're trying to build up a network. You go into a traditional model. You've got a supportive um, broker. They like you. They see you being effective. They, um, they it's a mentorship kind of setup. Obviously, you've got to produce the goods, but they they help help you move forward. Um, that's the good. That's the good side of the traditional model. The bad side of the traditional model and. This will probably be a little bit controversial, but I think it's true. Is and you see it in Reno with some, I won't name them, but you see it with some. Is it's a revolving door situation. Um, that they just get they're just always looking for agents. They look, don't really give these agents a lot of support. Um, at best, they're seeking the agent to get family and friends as sellers um after the first year um they leave or they're ditched and um you're on to new fodder basically what what do you think bill 
Well, I think we're confusing some, but the traditional <clears throat> concept with the, the sizes of offices, things of that nature. The size of the office, you know, maybe the real traditional office is six, 50 to 60 people, one city, but you can still have the traditional model with offices that have maybe 15, 16 offices, especially in California. In Reno, you see that less. Chase is one of the places with multiple offices, probably one of the biggest, probably have more offices than anyone, and they're expanding. But um, you can still have that traditional model. The traditional model is where the broker pays for all your costs. They bring you in. Usually, it used to be a 50-50 split. But often now, it's 60-40. And it's just a traditional uh, doesn't low low cost uh, entry for the real estate agent. But then, then they don't get the uh, higher commissions. And often, those, those folks who go to those places are, are newer, generally, at the, especially those commission rates. And the... Um, Entry into real estate, people realize how tough it is to make a living in real estate. It's a good, you can make a lot of money in real estate, but you got to work, work hard and you have to have systems in place. So that said, let's, let's move on. That's the traditional model. That's the front. We can talk about, we're not going to talk about franchise. It doesn't have to be a franchise. It can be a non-franchise or franchise. When you get that franchise in there, they're going to be taking away four to 6% off the top or even more, maybe 8%. Um, a lot of places have moved away from a franchise. That's another issue. Now let's talk about the desk fee. Now the desk fee was established, um, Remax is best known early. A lot of these systems evolved in the 50s and 60s. And a Remax, uh, basically, you go there and you pay 100% commission. And if you notice, the real, the, the commercials for Remax are usually in the spring, but they're they're targeting the agent as well as the home buyer to get that imagery. So they're making the agents look real good, uh, more professional. And what you'll find at Remax is you'll find a more seasoned agent, an agent that'll make it, not all the time, but I'd say 80% of the time. They start started in a traditional office and they've succeeded and they realize they can make more money by going up to hundred percent commission and really running their own business. And by the way, all real estate agents are truly solopreneurs or entrepreneurs and still they build a team and there gets to be some other issues there too. So that's the desk fee and then the hybrid and really the hybrid. And there's one more model mm -hmm. and I'm going to call it the virtual. So um, let me to make a message. So that's the hybrid and the virtual model. So, Anyway, that's how it goes. I got to make sure that people know that, especially my broker, my wife that I'm on shows, she's like texting me and trying to call me. <laughs> it's, all, it's all go, Bill. I just, so, just turn it off. I kind of also see another mo kind of the way this is going by, um, I went down to the um, California Realtor Association and that's that brokers are really becoming really – almost kind of semi-advertisement agencies. Um, they're providing graphic, you know, the bigger ones are providing a graphic designer in-house. Mm -hmm. They've got a web web person. Um, they're involved in um, social media and advising their agents around social media. They, they, they're doing Facebook advertisement in-house. They've got somebody in-house doing that. Um, they are much more involved in the actual mar digital marketing side and they bring those resources in-house and offer those to their agents. You know, I'll tell you, it's interesting that you said that because I've watched Chase and uh, so it kind of barriers there. Karen and I have both been brokers and I think there's a little internal competition sometimes. But I've been trying to get through to Chase to get some of their, their you know, their lot. you've seen my websites I've created and they're, they're better than any of theirs. I mean, not theirs per se, they're high-end bread website, but they're agents' websites. I've had a tough time getting like good files, getting good PNG files, things like that from them. A real estate brokerage should have great files on file for their agents to download and create. And every agent, they should encourage to have a personal blog. They start blogging all their agents. They're going to like go crazy. They're going to be control that town because all their agents are going to be blogging. If they blog the right way and they put in the keywords for that agency, they're going to show up real high, especially if they get the, the words in in the blogs. Yeah, and, they but they, and a lot of brokers don't understand that yet. And also, I think they would, Reno. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Um, also, I think generally they would say that they get resistance from their agents. But I, I, I think you know it's not a perfect world. You never have a perfect system. But yes, you are going to get some agents that just will not respond. But on the other hand. Are you really giving effective training and support? And if you get an agent that's really non-responsive and won't do any of the internal policies of the brokerage, maybe they're not the right agent for that 
broker um and maybe that line, agent yeah. right broker you know. cares about production just because a, a broker an agent doesn't blog or do those things they might have a huge network or maybe be the spouse of a top executive and like get a funnel of people in or like my my family my wife we've built subdivisions and you build a subdivision holy small if you're working a subdivision you can list houses because people will come to you with no idea of, of an agent to use and you'll get the referral and they'll list the house great sure. combination working a new subdivision and being able to list houses too but often a good subdivision will have a brokerage hooked in with it and they'll take some of the commission off the like a referral from those people come in the door so you were initially looking at this kind of small office model um you were initially looking to set that up in reno mm -hmm. so can you maybe give some details about what you're originally thinking of doing based on your experience your 20 we'll, years experience. we'll come right back to that after the break hey we're back from a break we had a great break <laughs> bills <laughs> bills are the fear <laughs> my phone is attacking me unbelievable my I, I called Apple yesterday. My phone's going bonkers. An agent can't have their phone go bonkers or anybody. It's such Bill, an important Bill's thing. Bill's finally going totally bonkers. <laughs> By the way, Karen had a call like from somewhere today, and she didn't answer it. And said, "Well, it's from like Indiana." So it was probably a salesperson. Well, it could be a referral coming in. You don't know for sure. Oh, she's still always answering phone. My, so I have it programmed to ring everywhere and every computer, every place you can pick it up. So I'll pick it up once in a while. So. so so go full, full. Yeah, we're back from the break. We're going to talk about the small office and some of the models that I was looking at. When I first came to Reno, and this is going to be the end of this show, a uh, small model I looked at, and I'm going to talk about two elements, is the virtual office. There are people now with virtual offices. And so like in California, a broker will basically pay a small fee to a broker, and they'll let you have an independent office out of your home. In California, you can do this in that city and, and then get a referral system and they provide you some computer systems and backup and training online with a very good model. Nevada, you can't do that because they require you to have a storefront. That means a physical address. So it's not as easy here. It can be done, but you got to go do a co-op or someplace where you physically have a desk in an office and that has to be registered as one of the offices. So it's a little more difficult in Nevada and in California. It's really easy. I like California's laws actually. There's, for um, there's one of my um, brokers, um, Trans yeah. 500. Uh -huh. that, that's the kind of kind of Kaiser set up they run in yeah. Reno. I have one to do that. I have one to uh, set up that model in California. In fact, I still might. We have California uh, First Realty California as one of our websites and names. So you know, what, what was commercial. your plans? You, so you had some unique plans for the actual look of it. What was that? So in Reno, I'm still going to do this, and it, it's going to take some work. It's basically come in. It looks like a genius bar in a Mac store. It's got two iMacs. It's got all the different programs where you cross-train people up front. You talk to them. They have like a the genius bar is a reception area for your one employee. Then you have a couple conference rooms, a traditional conference rooms to meet people, maybe an open area. But it's not really any desk for the agents. The agents just use that as a co-op or work center, much like the collective in downtown Reno, but not as big. Because brick and mortar cost money. And then you put your average, put your marketing money into really creating a hybrid of agents who are bloggers. And I love blogging. I just can't say enough about what blogging does over a period of time. If you go to Karen Con Conrad, just type in Karen Conrad now and go to images. All sorts of stuff starting to pop up now. And it's just based on our open houses. We really need to put more stuff in there, though. Uh, we need to do more local community stuff, but uh, it's working. And then the other side of that is hooking in a podcast or a netcast to it. And those concepts work as they evolve. And that's about it. That's the small little office. What we talked about today, we talked about the traditional brokerage. We talked about the you know, traditional brokerage of 60 people, maybe one office splits 50-50. We talked about the desk fee office, which is where you pay uh, to play and basically get 100% of your commission generally. And even some of those desk offices in Remax now have a 30-70 split to a better agents who are evolving where they're not paying 100% of the desk fee. And then we talked about the small uh, hybrid or the uh, virtual offices that you see in California, not so much in Nevada. And that's about it. Those are about the models that are out there right now. We can go a lot more detail into other areas in future times. So. I think we'll do a next next show. Maybe we'll go into uh, more of the blogging and maybe a little bit of the the blabcast or podcast. How you can hook that yeah, in? Yeah, just also because you're the one with the experience. Um, let's say you're just out of school, out of real estate school. You know, you're looking at different agents. You know, you're looking around. Mm -hmm. um, what what do you think somebody who who's new you know, the first six months? 
have you got any advice about what they should look at when it when it, it about which brokerage, which brokerage yeah. you, how to how do they make an assessment which brokerage they should join? Good I would go advice. initially. I go to a big. I mean, I'm, I've always been small brokerages, but I would go to a big brokerage. I go to a traditional big brokerage. I look at their training, and what happens in those traditional big brokerages? They'll get one or two, three transactions before the person moves on and they're happy because they're lower commissions and they'll keep some of the agents and they'll, they'll, they'll mentor them and they'll give them higher commissions. So the big brokerages with the best training, I would go to them first to get that experience. And then they, maybe later on niche down into some of those more detailed, some of the more evolving brokerages. But I think the big brokerage definitely, especially if you're going into the area, we have a brokerage in California, but when we moved here, we started an independent small brokerage. Tough to get uh, your traction going where Karen, joined Chase, got to know a lot of agents, community people. And uh, I think Chase is actually a pretty good place to start um, for an agent. But you've got to be, I think it's tailored more towards, I don't know, uh, Chase, I don't know who it's tailored exactly towards. They're like using the Steve Jobs model. Hmm. Yeah, they well, use, they use the, the, you know, the photography, yeah. the color schemes, the, especially the photography. Yeah, It's black and white. It's got that look hasn't it that yeah, she look came in. from that era the, the broker and they have they definitely um have the high-end houses and a lot of fun too you get to see the high-end houses meet some good agents so if you go to two smaller brokerage when you start you're isolated too much i mean uh, i've always had small brokerages so I'm, I'm but you know as you evolve i mean this is we'll talk about this later but as you evolve create a team maybe two or three teams in a small brokerage that's a great model because you um, help each other and you bring us it's, it's a good model that evolves and you said about training. What what do you consider to be good training? Why don't we talk about that in another show? Yeah, I right. think we've hit, hit the limits on this. We'll talk about the basis of training. What I would say is developing lists and lists and farms. That's the most important part of training. And then it goes on and on from there. You know, there's a lot to real estate, how to make offers, complexities. And and that's another thing I'm going to put up too. On my wife's site, I'm going to start putting down all of on her blog all of the clauses that we use uh, in real estate, which are really unique. So people can see those. And the reason why I want to do that is I want Karen, which she's got all that brokerage time, but I want her to be an expert in her field. That's what every agent should strive for. Be an expert exactly. in your field. That's good yeah. enough for today. I think Jonathan, I've yeah, got my I phone think, over there. I wonder if my phone still works. I don't know, Bill, you he, uh, folks, you probably, I don't know if you've seen it. It depends if Bill edits, but you actually had a little fitty fit. And he, <laughs> actually, he actually threw his $800 Apple phone on the wall. Well, um, um, it was most hilarious. Bill's had these occasional moments. For about but, three uh, days now, my Apple I've, phone. I've actually wetted myself, actually, folks. Um, <laughs> well, no, here's the deal is I, <clears throat> I like my Apple phone a lot, but it's really doing some crazy things. I use it like a maniac, and it's a 5S. It's time for a 6. It was but, a 5S, Bill. Yeah, but I need to. I'm about to. I was online yesterday. I'm about to um, re-image it and reinstall the software. And I just bought the cloud. I've got so much cloud space. But that's another story. That's a tech story. So do but, you think throwing it across the room onto the wall actually is going to hurt it? No, it can't hurt it. No, you sure? No, it's I not just good. like. It's a I just like, it's, a, it's, a, I, it's, yeah. stucco. it's not a stucco. It's a, a sheetrock wall. So it's right. soft. I used to build houses. I didn't right. throw it that hard. I sort of bounced a little bit. Oh, that's nice. I'd just like to finish with one statement folks it's not good to throw your phone do not no, throw your phone no, just no. Bit, don't be a secret agent you yeah. know the, yeah. the thing is you're not going to sell any homes if you're the secret agent right right <laughs> unless you have a big family and your secret you know just your family knows sometimes that works or you, yeah that won't, that won't work folks in oh, we're three. blabbing now that's why we call it blab yep so thanks folks Hey, we're back after the show, and I just want to put this up for a couple of minutes because Jonathan and I were chit-chatting, doing our business and work, and I recovered my phone, by the way, for those worried about my phone. It still works, but I do have to reinstall uh, all of the uh, software because it had its own little problem. But anyway, we have Carl on. Carl is from New Jersey. He's uh, back on the East Coast there. What part of New Jersey are you coming from? And you're on your phone. Yeah, it's northern New Jersey. Uh, primarily work out of Morris County, uh, Sussex, and Warren. He's a little light, but you're using your iPhone 6. I'm surprised it's not picking up the sound a little bit better. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I don't know. I can put my earphones in. There you go. No, that's better. If you had your earphones stuck in like this, it'd be pretty amazing. Do you have them with you? Uh, yeah, hold on a second. Let's do a quick test. I'm going to pause. So we've got Carl from New Jersey. Give a pitch real fast. Tell the agents how they can get a hold of you. Yeah, sure. My name is Carl Blanchard. I'm with Weikert Realtors in northern New Jersey. You can reach me at Blanchard NJ Home on Twitter or at Blanchard NJ Homes on Facebook, or you can give me a call, 908 235 9234. 
908-235-9234. That's right. The phone number is still the most important thing for a real estate agent. Yep. Don't be a secret agent. <laughs> and Carl is using, well, all he did is on his iPhone, we're on Blab, and he used, he plugged this in, so he's using this mic right here. So that's, I would use that. There's another mic too. I'm going to pop. Okay, this is Bill. I'm back with Carl. Carl, you would be amazed at this. This is a that- road designed it's r3 road mm-hmm. designed directly for the iphone and it would give you an amazing sound if you had this it would be like you're right with us check it out can you pin it right on here and how much is that roughly Bill? it's gone up it's uh the new version's even better than this and i'll have it on my website because i got my new amazon back up my affiliate accounts so anyway, how, how much roughly is it how much roughly is it uh about 60 dollars, but it's amazingly good I mean, I do. It's like you want to go out and do a little um, for your open houses. Take your iPhone and set up a YouTube account and talk. You get amazingly good sound. I can show you some examples where I've used this, but this is definitely the tool for your open houses. The Rode, about sixty, seventy dollars. It does and, actually. Um, I've seen Bill use it actually, Carl, and it it actually does make because it removes most of the wind noise. And the new one's and even better. The, the new yeah. one of these. It's even better than the wind noise. Yeah, it gets rid of the, the wind noise, Carl. It's got so, um, 